Hello everyone, I am Aishi Jain and on behalf of Roly Books, I welcome you all to this episode of Roly Pearls brought to you by Roly Books. Please subscribe to our channel if you already haven't and make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook to never miss any update. You can visit our website and subscribe to our newsletter as well. On this auspicious day of Besakhi, we bring you a discussion on Janam Saki, Paintings on Guru Nanak in Early Sikh Art by Nikki Guninder Kaur Singh. Dr. Singh is the Chair of Department and Crawford Family Professor of Religion at Colby University in USA. Her interests focus on politics and feminist issues. She has published extensively in the field of Sikh studies like Poems from the Guru Granth Sahib and Hymns of the Sikh Gurus. Dr. Singh will be in conversation with Harleen Singh, who is the founder of the Lost Heel Project, which aims to document the stories of women in colonial Punjab. He is also working on a book on the same subject. I welcome you both. So, Harleen, why don't you get us started? Thank you so much, Ayushi, for making this happen. I would like to welcome Dr. Nikki Ganinder Kaur Singh. She's the chair of the Department of Religious Studies at Calvi College in the US. She holds the Crawford Chair of Religion. Dr. Saiba has hosted many books in the field of Sikh studies. And today we're here to talk about her latest book, Janam Sadhki, Paintings of Guru Nanak in Early Sikh Art. Welcome, Dr. Saiba. Uh, let's start the conversation about uh, you telling us how did you start this project? Thank you, Harleen, and Basaki di bohat bohat mubarak. Such an awesome occasion. Happy Basaki to all of us, and it's really nice <clears> to connect <throat> with you. And I'm really proud of the work you are doing. So Thank it's you. really good to meet up. Um, this project actually started. Um, this is my pandemic project, as I call it, and. Um, this goes back years. I was teaching, you know, I've been teaching at Kobe College for many years. And there was a young student of mine who wanted to do an honors thesis. So very good. And he wanted to do it on Guru Nanak's travels. Mm -hmm. And I was, yes, travels are fine. But how about Guru Nanak's philosophy or, you know, something to do with the literature, etc. But he was a great hiker, you know, young American kid, you know, just wanting to do that. So I said, OK. And he did a marvelous job. And it really made me kind of look into what travels and how much Guru Nanak traveled and by foot in those days, you know. Mm -hmm. So what traveling means, you know, externally learning about things, internalizing mm -hmm. kind of a discovery. So that got me really excited. And then the pandemic came and I said, hey, I can't travel anywhere. So Guru Nanak's travels were kind of a you know, <laughs> vicarious way of traveling to different places. And then also um, that uh, August, my student was getting married. So mm -hmm. he asked me, he and his, you know, fiance at that point, they were both Colby mm -hmm. students, asked me to officiate the wedding. So that got me even more excited. So then I, this book is actually uh, dedicated to them, uh, to Jay and Molly for their wedding. So that's how Amazing. I started, and I really enjoyed it very mm -hmm. much. Also, um, I, I must say it was a Basaki, many, mm -hmm. just the Basaki before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Swaranjit Singh in Phoenix had invited me to give a talk, and I gave it on the Janam Sakis. I, you know, I think it may have been on the B40 mm -hmm. Janam Saki. And immediately mm -hmm. thereafter, he instilled the idea in me, why don't you do a book on it? And I said, book? And I said, I don't have the images. And he was mm -hmm. like, I'll get the images. And so he sparked the interest. I had that time during the pandemic, couldn't travel. So all those things came together. And I happened to call um, Ruli. And I mm -hmm. remember speaking with Kapil. And he was just so gracious and so inspirational. So literally over the year, I worked very, very hard and um it, it became a very exciting project something mm -hmm. personal but also the way Priya and Kapil and then of course you know Neelam Narula all these people in Roli were very very helpful and my friend in England at the British mm -hmm. Library uh, Marina Kellini she was very useful in getting the images and so forth so everything came together so here mm -hmm. we are today and celebrating Basaki with these uh B40 Janam Saki Lovely. Uh, so for those who do not know, tell us about a little bit about the Janam Saki tradition in Sikhi. What is the Janam Saki? 
Um, Harleen, this begins with our founder, Guru Nanak, who was born in 1469. Mm -hmm. He travels. He has a revelation. He's starting his new tradition. And people are mesmerized by him. Wherever he goes, people are kind of, you know, there's some kind of a spiritual contagion about him. So wherever mm -hmm. he goes, people are kind of evoked spiritually. Mm -hmm. And so stories start circulating and so forth. So the Janam Sakhis, basically the stories of his life, of his birth, they started mm -hmm. circulating right after his passing away or maybe even during his lifetime. Mm -hmm. And um, so people wanted to keep him in their memory. So wherever yeah. went, so wherever the Sangats were, wherever the Sikh populations were. So mm -hmm. not only in the Punjab, like places like Amritsar or Damdama or, Sab, or uh, Anandpur Sab, but also where the 10th Guru was born, let's say Patna, mm -hmm. and there. So you have a wide kind of a scope, geographical scope, where, you know, where the Sikh communities wanted to kind of uh, record recount their uh, their history so to say mm -hmm. and by the way um this is also something um the whole landscape when we think about mm -hmm. the Indus landscape that itself is very rich with the biographical hagiographical right. stories we yeah. have the Hindu gods we have the jataka stories from Buddha, mm -hmm. and we also have, you know, the Sufis, their karamats, mm -hmm. the saints, the miracles that they performed. So it was that kind of a milieu in which mm -hmm. the narratives, the stories about great figures were told and retold, and mm -hmm. Saki authors and the artists kind of uh, started uh, jotting them down. Right. So, so, um, an important aspect, so it was not much, one has to keep in mind that these mm. are their <clears throat> historical or geographical factual accuracy was not right. their concern. But who mm. the person is, what is his message? What right. are the values? I think that's what they wanted to convey. And that's where the beauty of the Janam Sakis and the power of the Janam Sakis lies. So it's a hagiography rather than a biography. Yeah, I, 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 however you want to use those terms. To me, okay. uh, it's kind of remembering. It's the memory right. of, uh -huh. and this is kind of, you know, uh, with, in their own personal ways, wh who the mm -hmm. author is, who the artist is. So they use mm -hmm. their own proclivities, remembering the guru. Um, and one other important aspect of the Janam Sakis is that it also works as an interpretation. Like mm -hmm. Guru Nanak's, we know Guru Nanak's verse. That's mm -hmm. perfectly historically recorded by Guru Arjan in 1604. That's correct. Yep. His words are there. How do mm -hmm. we understand them? So I think these are also, um, Janam Sakis are also ways to kind mm -hmm. of understand his, his words, his message. So many mm -hmm. of them set up a stage. Guru mm -hmm. Nanak is like, for example, even the cover uh, of, of, of our book. Mm -hmm. This one, you know, mm -hmm. it's a city dog. It's a beautiful hymn, Guru Nanak's yeah. hymn, you know, uh, where um, he's saying everything is, it's great eating all mm -hmm. these kind of rasas, wearing mm -hmm. clothes, houses, different kind of spaces where you want to live, riding horses, etc. Mm -hmm. You have to be, you have to remember the divine one. Without it, it's toxic. But with right. the remembrance, with the consciousness, with the awareness of the divine one, it's beautiful. So it's it's a story, you know, where he comes close to, he and Pai Mardana are traveling. Mm -hmm. They t end up being close to, um, uh, to the home. But Guru Nanak doesn't want to go back because mm -hmm. he's um, he doesn't want to provoke the sadness when the, mm -hmm. what the family felt when he left initially. So right. he says, no, Pai Mardana, don't tell my parents anything. Just go he, because Pai Mardana wanted to see his family. So mm -hmm. Pai Mardana goes and he visits. And when he sees Mata Tripti, Tripta, she's mm -hmm. like, she can tell. She's a smart person. She mm -hmm. knows that, you know, uh, Mardana is keeping something from her because she asks the whereabouts of Nanak. He says, oh, no, I don't know where he is. And so she takes the clothes, she takes food, and she kind of follows, you know, goes. Mm -hmm. And so it's a meeting. So the father and the mother and uh, Pai Mardana is there. And so this is kind of, you know, very, very beautiful kind right. of a scene. Yes. Kind of 
expressing our existentiality, Sikh existentiality. It is mm -hmm. in this world rather than the other world. And that mm -hmm. was very intrinsic to Guru Nanak. This is what mm -hmm. our founder Guru, what did he say? He was against asceticism. He was against renunciation. So mm -hmm. to be in the world and to remember that infinite one, Ikonkar. Mm -hmm. So that message is being relayed here, but in a very beautiful way. Wow. So you can actually see the birds and you can smell the flowers and it's very, very sensuous. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so your book actually talks, uh, so your book is actually about the B40 Janam Saki in specific. Yeah. Uh, what is what is what is the B40 Janam Saki and why is okay, it so now, different from uh, the others? Uh, so the Janam Sakis uh, have come in lots of different traditions as the Aad, Puratan, Balad. Mm -hmm. And this one is very interesting, B40 mm -hmm. Janam Saki. For most of the other Janam Sakis, we do not know their history, where they were, you know, where they were, what should I say, uh, you know, collected, mm -hmm. uh, who the artist was, who the scribe was, who the patron was. In this case, we really have everything, which is very mm -hmm. unusual. So it mm -hmm. makes it very historically significant. Mm -hmm. So it, um, I think it was in nine, you know, it kind of surfaced in Lahore sometime in the 19th century. And by 1907, the British Library had it and it's the accession number B40. So that's the oh, number nice. given to it. So okay. that's where it is. It's in the British Library. So mm -hmm. I remember seeing it many years ago and my dear friend uh, Marina showing it to me in a very, very respectful way. Um, mm -hmm. So um, so it's number one, it's, it's very significant. So one mm -hmm. is it's historical. Mm -hmm. Number two is also it's visually very beautiful. So many of them do not have uh, visual paintings and artists. This one has the paintings, 57 beautiful paintings. So um, we know who the scribe is, mm -hmm. uh, we know who the patron is, and we know who the artist is. And the artist is Alamchand Raj. Mm -hmm. And Raj, as we know, were the carpenters, mysteries, and so forth, artisans, and so forth. So. Um, he had that background, very rich mm -hmm. artistic background, which he kind of uh, portrays in his work. So they really, you know, you, when you look at the architecture of the B-14, very mm -hmm. specific, very, very interesting. <laughs> B-40 also has great literary significance okay. because um, it's Punjabi is very nice. And by the way, uh, the mm -hmm. Janam Sakhis, th this is the first prose Punjabi that we have written. Mm -hmm. So they're very mm -hmm. significant from that perspective. And mm -hmm. uh, it has lots of different um, dialects. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I was reading it, sometimes, you know, it, it changes quite a lot. So uh, from that perspective, it's very, very uh, important historically um, and visually. And I think uh, what really captured my uh, imagination and my real interest was its progressiveness. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, lot of, uh, because the artist does take his own kind of liberty, what he trans, you know, what he translates visually in the language mm -hmm. of colors. Uh, mm -hmm. And Alam Chandraj does some, where we don't see in the original, like in the mm -hmm. text itself, um, the guru visits uh, certain places in the mountains, in the Himachal area, and there are all these ascetics, male ascetics. Mm -hmm. But he also shows a female ascetic mm -hmm. and so she's a saint and she's actually total partner with the male mm -hmm. you know with the male saint and so it's very nice to see a female body totally mm -hmm. you know wearing beautiful outfit earrings etc and being totally spiritual there's that mm -hmm. little the symbol in those days was a water pot you know, which kind mm -hmm. of and so forth. She has it. So does mm -hmm. he. So they're very equal. And mm -hmm. she's looking directly at Guru Nanak. And that's very nice, you know, to, to see that, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not only that, but um, there are lots of images, you know, mm -hmm. another one is where you see a uh, Sufi saint cross-dressed. Mm -hmm. And Guru Nanak is having a wonderful conversation with him. He's mm -hmm. not you know, totally at ease. And he tells him it really doesn't matter. So the openness of the guru, the progressiveness of the guru, I think mm -hmm. uh, that that uh, this Janam Saki really draws that very, very beautiful, has great appeal for that. Mm -hmm. And 
And so we have many, as I said, many uh, different traditions and so forth. Mm-hmm. And this <clears throat> one does not have the bala image, but we wow. do have a uh, paimardana in almost okay. everywhere, oh, wherever everywhere. the yeah. is. Mm-hmm. So it shows a lot of affinity with Islam, Sufism. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that that's, you know, mm-hmm. in fact, one of the stories is um, the Sufi master comes back to his khanka and his disciple asks him, why are you, you know, you're so radiant, it's, you know, you, you're all flushed, what's the matter? And he says, he had just met with Guru Nanak and he says, mm-hmm. Aj ka lal milia. you know, mm-hmm. so, ka la, you know, so today I met, Lots. you know, the beloved of uh, mm-hmm. Khuda. Mm-hmm. So people, people kind of connected with him and to see that, you know, so, so uh, what the artist does, what the paintings do is kind of uh, disclose Guru Nanak's spirituality, mm-hmm. you know, how it goes, somebody is affected, people are affected by it. So it's, it, it doesn't show him doing great things or anything. He's just there and people are mm-hmm. just taken by him. And it, it's just whatever is in him, the divinity, the spirituality that is in, people see it, people hear it, people sense it. And mm-hmm. uh, and that's, that's it's conveyed very beautifully in in, in these paintings. So one very interesting thing about the B40 I personally found was the art, which is uh, in the Janam Saki, is very Rajasthani. Because uh, the Janam Saki's I saw, like I've, I've been saying, has a lot of Kangra influence on them. So yeah. uh, can you tell us how the Janam Saki influenced Sikh society, literature, and art in general? Yeah, no, it's been, it's a very, very important, uh, uh, in fact, where, where does art originate? in the Janam Sakis, and it right. continues on that way. <clears throat> so uh, it, the whole, I, it, I would say, you know, uh, Sikh art and iconography mm. are impacted by the Janam Sakis. Mm. And um, the way Guru Nanak is presented, that's mm-hmm. what we see today. That's what we saw during Maharaja Ranjit Singh's time, whether it's on the coins, whether it's on the quads, whether it's Soba Singh, mm-hmm. whether it's Arpana Kaur today, Mm-hmm. And so, so that um, just the way the guru is um, presented, um, I think that kind of that model, that paradigm, has been constant in in Sikh art. Mm-hmm. Furthermore, it also spells out how the pluralism, Guru Nanak mm-hmm. meeting the people, different people. So that pluralism that is very intrinsic to. Uh, the Janam Sakis. He's meeting with the Hindu. He's meeting with the Muslim. He's meeting with Kaal. He's meeting with Bhagat Kabir. He's meeting with Babur. So he's a meeting with a whole host of people going mm-hmm. to different places. And the Janam Sakis portray that. So these mm-hmm. spaces to familiarize the with the other, with the different, I think that's very, very significant. And as I said before, uh, Alam Chandraj. Mm-hmm. Because of his background, um, mm-hmm. he does a marvelous job of uh, of the buildings, you know. So mm-hmm. you see, you know, tombs and you see homes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and even this kind of a, you know, uh, maybe it, you know, like the tents that the Sufis use, kind oh, of flexible. Mm-hmm. So you the see Shamiana. those. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, so it's just uh, um, the variety that's there. Mm-hmm. And even Guru Nanak, what he wears, you know, mm-hmm. he, he this one shows him with the tilak, but right, he's wearing yes. the outfit. He has a seli, he has a mm-hmm. Sufi cap, mm-hmm. but then he also shows uh, the Hindu teacher. Mm-hmm. So, um, so those are very significant. <clears throat> and the whole, so, in a way, uh, this is very, very significant for our, uh, you know, for the identity, Sikh identity. Uh, mm-hmm individual identity and for the collective identity mm-hmm. and um, also sometimes people have remarked i think i was reading mcleod somewhere that it's been very influenced by sufi art and mm-hmm. i don't quite think so i would say like when i i'm just when we look at the b40 there's a mm-hmm. lot of affinity with with islam of course that's the beauty mm-hmm. of it you know mm-hmm. people guru nanak loves meeting with uh, sufis whether it's a cross dress sufi He's very mm-hmm. much, in fact, he praises him. You sing, you sing beautiful on the songs of love. Why don't you sing some? Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, Sheikh Sharaf starts singing, you know, and Guru mm-hmm. Nanak praises him greatly. So he's very much in tune with them. Mm-hmm. But 
to say that Sikhat is influenced, mm -hmm. and of course there have been exchanges and so forth, I would not quite agree because to me it's a very particular Sikh art and iconography. And here Guru Nanak is simply there. And mm -hmm. he's not with any, you know, in, in these early ones, in, the, in this particular one, mm -hmm. he doesn't have a halo, you mm -hmm. know, so that all that came, came in later. <clears throat> And he's he's just it's just his own uh, power that he exudes, mm -hmm. and that's that's how Alam Chand I think is so successful um, mm -hmm. without anything you know these artificial kind of he doesn't have that you know where they had a little seed he doesn't have a book now book there are sometimes when Guru Nanak is shown with a manuscript here he is not mm -hmm. so that was his own manuscript what is he shown with patti you know that. Uh -huh writing board yeah. so the writing board something new is going to happen whereas mm -hmm. with the sufi saints you often see them carrying the holy book or book mm -hmm. so it's yeah. kind of adding something of the past mm -hmm. see that's very significant guru yeah. nanak's is no this is something new has to happen there's a patti mm -hmm. which is kind of where he's going to write and he creates his own patti liki that beautiful composition mm -hmm. that we have in the guru granth sahib his own alphabet that he introduces and so forth so this is um, you know it's it's uh, so b40 is very significant in many mm -hmm. many ways so to wrap up our conversation uh, tell us about your favorite sakhi in the b40 Okay, that which is hard to do. I like them all, Arlene. How am I going which to find? Which is your them? most favorite? Tell us, tell us that. <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, uh, okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, but I also uh, want to emphasize is mm -hmm. that um, overall, it, it's going back to your question. You're really making me think. Um, but its impact on uh, Sikh literature and art and so forth. I think it really, these, these Janam Sakis do a really good job of depicting the basics of Sikh philosophy. I don't know how they manage it. They're very simple mm -hmm. and yet they're very powerful. And so what you see is everywhere, the Sikh existentiality you know it's in this world the beauty of this world you know so when we talk about people have said oh the janam sakis talk about all these miracles and so forth the miracles are not there it's not guru nanak doing miracles the miracle mm -hmm. is in him making us think about what is our problem mm -hmm. what are we doing for example we see pola robber the robber mm -hmm. is there beautifully <clears throat> immaculately dressed and then he kind of steals robs all the all the people who are travelers Mm -hmm. So Guru Nanak, I think the robber is not a robber out there who Guru Nanak, however victorious is, it's a robber within us because Guru mm -hmm. Nanak calls the five senses. We have these five senses which can be cultivated and refined into virtues, five guna, or we can live an immoral life and they can degenerate into avgun immorality, mm -hmm. calm, cruel, low, more, ankar. And once mm -hmm. so we are robbed by them, so we mm -hmm. can, so th this robber is within us, right. or that guy, or that, um, the monster that you have. Remember, that's mm -hmm. a story that you kind of comes across in many different Janam Sakis. And I, in this one, it's, uh, uh, Guru Nanak is not put in the, uh, in the hot, it's a big cauldron, cauldron and there's a yeah. huge monster, mm -hmm. which kids love to see. You know, so these are mm -hmm. these are stories that feed our very identity, whether we are little kids sitting in our mothers and fathers and grannies laps, mm -hmm. or we are doing whether I teach a class today. I will use some of the stories. So they impact us. We can we can interpret them in many ways and they help us navigate our life, our everyday world, and that raw that monster who's very kind of woo, scary, you know, real fangs, etc. He has these people sitting there and um, Guru Nanak comes with Pai Mardana and he may throw them all in the cauldron, you know, hot cauldron, mm -hmm. and he gulps them down. And Guru Nanak just touches it with this and it all cools down and he can't do anything. So in a way, yes, the kids like it. Oh my gosh, uh, the cauldron was all cooled. It's also all the anger and, you know, hatred and all that 
fire that we have mm-hmm. within us. And if we were to cool it, everything would be fine. So I think they play a role at a bigger level, at some kind of right. a level that um, is really kind of... They're very, very symbolic cool. rather than just on the paper. On the paper and also not, we can't look for history. These are not, these are not, this is, did not happen. Mm-hmm. But what what is it significant? And that's what happens. Sometimes people are looking for historical, the historical Guru mm-hmm. Nanak there. Mm-hmm. And that's, I, I don't think that's, that should be the, you know, but we find things here. Langar, Guru Nanak mentions Langar here. In fact, mm-hmm. in one of the narratives, he says, uh, Langar should be served twice a day. And it should mm-hmm. be something that is good, that people like. Mm-hmm. You know, so Langar is there, Seva is there, Sangat is there. So these are very important, uh, uh, you know, institutions of Sikhism. But mm-hmm. Genesis in is very beautifully um, found in the Janam Sakis themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have um, I have two. So I'll I'll, I'll okay. give you one. One of my favorites is uh, towards the end uh, mm-hmm. of the B Janam Saki, B Potty Janam Saki, and I think it's number fifty six. We have all together fifty seven, and their Guru Nanak is bathing, and his body is bruised, and he's showing his bruises to. Guru Angad, his disciple, who will be the second Guru, who will be endowed with Guruship. So it's a very nice historical moment. Guru Nanak is the founder. This is our second Guru. And he's showing him the bruises on his back. What's going on? And uh, the narrative is that Guru Nanak tells him uh, to Guru Angad um, that the night before, uh, there was a shepherd and he was in a thorny area and he was reciting Kirtan Suela, mm-hmm. Arti Suela. And the guru was there with him. And so as the shepherd is going, as he's uh, reciting the Bani, mm-hmm. Guru Nanak is with him and that's why he got bruised from those thorny bushes. Mm-hmm. Isn't it such a sophisticated story? And it's been ignored, you know, by scholars and so forth. Oh, it's very sophisticated. And what it's showing is the body and the poetry connection. Mm-hmm. This is the guru is there where his poetry is recited. Right. So that's really beautiful. So it's a very corporeal relationship. Mm-hmm. And that corporeality is brought out by the Janamsakis. This mm-hmm. is the guru. We have his verse, but there's his presence, you know, which mm-hmm. makes it three dimensional which makes it, you know, some of these narratives, I want to be there. I want to ask him questions mm-hmm. myself, you know. So it's very hard to kind of move on from one to the other. That was the hardest part of uh, um, of, of this project. Um, so to me, that Guru Bani link, which is so mm-hmm. central to us today, Absolutely. Guru yeah. Mani, mm-hmm. Guru so that has, it's, it's kind of foreshadowed in mm-hmm. that uh, Janam Sakhi. Uh, Mm-hmm. So they're really, you know, there's su- such subtle subtleties and mm-hmm. they should not be ignored, I just mm-hmm. want to say. Now, you asked me about my favorite. I will find you my favorite. And, uh, and but to, to be honest with you, I'm really angry that I did not know about it till, uh, till I started doing my research. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so it is this one. Can mm-hmm. we see? Uh, uh, yes. So what's the uh, page number? I have my the page copy. number is one twenty nine, one twenty eight, one twenty nine. So this is a garden scene, right. and this is a uh, Shivnab Raja Shivnab. So mm-hmm. Guru Nanak has gone in that to his area uh, the, mm-hmm. the raja has not yet met guru nanak but he has heard stories about him that, that mm-hmm. this really wonderful wonderful person who has come in mm-hmm. fact the garden that was all kind of dilapidated and so forth guru nanak enters it and it blossoms mm-hmm. all the fruits and flowers and the birds and fruit are just you know blooming mm-hmm. so he wants to know actually he wants to test the guru so it's mm-hmm. very interesting so from a literary perspective mm-hmm. uh, this narrative is very significant mm-hmm. because uh, the way, uh, okay, so what does he do? So he wants to, he sends. So what we see here is the four 
young women mm-hmm. who have gone to seduce Guru Nanak, mm-hmm. you know, because the Raja sends them because he mm-hmm. wants to, he doesn't believe one, maybe he's jealous or whatever. Number two, he wants to check, you know, is he really, you know, that strong a person who can resist all the charms of the, his, you know, slave girls. These are slave girls mm-hmm. of Raja Shivna. So they go with their, you know, the way the Janam Saki describes is they go with all their, you know, outfits, beautiful food and luscious this and that. But mm-hmm. the paint the artist does is they are totally, totally mesmerized by the guru. So what mm-hmm. happens is that they go and they are totally enchanted. So I, I titled the enchantresses are enchanted by the guru. And it's literary wise very beautiful because the way the narrative itself, the text itself, describes their beauty in really lovely love very aesthetically you know it Mm -hmm. draws back to indra's celestial maidens you know they're very beautiful they're of different ages and Mm -hmm. the trope too you know how uh, indra sends um manika to kind of seduce the ascetic in the same way raja shivnab sends the cv of women Mm -hmm. to so they see the guru and you can see they're all enchanted. They're beautiful. Everything mm-hmm. guru is present. And um, what guru does is he recites to them. Um, uh, actually, the, the, the scripture, he, he recites a scriptural verse, which is actually mm-hmm. very, very, you know, it has all to do with the female imagery, which is very mm-hmm. pervasive in the Guru Granth Sahib. So that hymn is used and mm-hmm. they hear it. So in a way, the female subjects, hearing the female subject of the Guru Granth Sahib mm-hmm. that the Guru recites to them are utterly transformed. They are empowered mm-hmm. and they are totally taken by the Guru. They become his followers and they go back. And when they go to the palace, the Raja mm-hmm. calls them and they say, hey, don't you call us slave girls, call us your daughters. So you mm-hmm. see what happens is they are no more slave girls. We are mm-hmm. not your chairies anymore. We uh, treat us like your daughters. So their newfound strength. This is the power of the Janam Sakis. And mm-hmm. Arlene, I grew up in a Sikh household in the Punjab. Why did I never hear this story? Mm-hmm. You know, you're doing your project, The Lost Heel. So there are there are there are these very important female protagonists, female models, mm-hmm. and somehow the other the, what Janam Sakis we record are or we are told popular stories that we hear, such important ones are just not, you know, uh, told and Mm -hmm. retold. They're just not popular. So Mm -hmm. we need to make these popular because there's a lot, you know, I draw strength from it, these slave girls. And they stand up, you know, the way way they describe, the text describes them, they go, they stand up, they have their new voice. They are not going to be, you know, his little slave girls anymore. So, uh, so that's one of my favorites. I could just mm-hmm. it's go a on. Beautiful, on. It's a beautiful sake. Yeah, it, it is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. how come I never heard about it? That's, it's visually beautiful as well. Like the way it's painted, like the gardens, the leaves, and the fruits. Yeah. You can really smell. You can mm-hmm. sense. You can touch. Yeah. You know, that, that that all of them are like that. That's what uh, Alam Chand does. And mm-hmm. so I want. I really would like to be very honest with you. I. I just don't want it to be in Sikh homes. Mm -hmm. I really want it to be everywhere. You know, the world is very divided, so polarized. Mm -hmm. People don't know the Sikhs have been, for example, I live in America. Sikhs have been here for how many, you know, a century and a half or something. And yet nobody knows about them. So Mm -hmm. these, these, these narratives, the world changes. Why did Guru Nanak write poetry? The world Mm -hmm. changes through the consciousness by changing our Mm -hmm. consciousness. Yeah. And I think these stories, which we just kind of ignore, oh, big deal. You know, who was it? Muriel Rukaiser, who said the world is not made up of atoms. The world is made up of stories. How mm-hmm. we think, how we change the world is through our stories. And mm-hmm. so these stories from 1733, somewhere in the Punjab, can really help us out here by expanding us, mm-hmm. expanding us intellectually. Mm-hmm. expanding us emotionally, expanding us spiritually. And that's simple stories, but we need to bring 
I wish, and I want to hear my students or um, other, not just Sikhs, but how do others uh, interpret these stories? That's very mm -hmm. fascinating too. So we should open them up and, yeah. um, you know, and, and not treat them. These are devotional. I do not disagree at all. These are devotional. Mm -hmm. For example, even the B40 story, B40 narrative is Khushi Karni Ji, you know, Rasna uh, Halauni Ji, Vai Guru, you know. So the, it, the community created it, collected it, mm -hmm. and for the joy, Khushi, Khushi. And I think that Khushi needs to spread across the globe. And this is one media. So you have to help us because I don't do any uh, Skype or anything like that. But I do want to. So Dr. Nikki Gunindar Kaur Singh's latest book, Janam Sakhi, Paintings of Guru Nanak in Early Sikhat, published by Roli Books, is out and available for purchase. Thank you so much, Dr. Saiba, for the conversation and giving us the time. And happy Basaki to everyone. Thank you, Harleen. And thanks to Roli. Thank you.